So, Eternals, the MCU's most divisive movie yet, is now out on Blu-ray and 4K, and I managed to pick up the really cool Best Buy exclusive steelbook, so we're gonna open it all up and uh, see how it holds up. So let's get into it. The steelbook on the front sports every Eternal in front of some gold beams. It's not real gold, so don't even ask. It also features the film's logo, which I always like seeing on steelbooks. The backside features one of the ancient symbols from the movie, which looks alright. I would have preferred they show off the flying pizza slice they call a spaceship. Then the insert artwork shows one of the Celestials. These things kind of scare me, I'm not gonna lie. Hello, friends, and welcome back to the Brock Upside. And it's funny, usually when you want to get one of Best Buy's really cool steelbooks, you have to be, like, inside the store within seconds of it opening. But this time, Best Buy was actually overflowing with these steelbooks, which is really weird. I've never seen so many steelbook copies for one movie before. In fact, I bet if you peeled off Best Buy's wallpaper, it'd be like, boom, more Eternal steelbooks. I've been on the more positive side when it comes to this movie, I appreciate Marvel trying to do something kind of different, you know, spanning thousands of years and just building on the overall lore of the MCU and all. The cinematography is absolutely gorgeous with its strong use of practical locations. That said, the movie probably tries to do a little too much in one movie, which can make things a little bit jumbled. But that's enough about the movie, let's talk disc stuff, yo. As far as bonus content goes, this is some of the worst I've seen in a long time. You get two whole ass featurettes, which add up to about 15 minutes? It covers the basics, talking about the comics, then bringing it to life on the big screen, and so on. It was cool to see them like designing the costumes and talking about the locations, but it just brings up my major gripe with bonus content these days. They just skim through everything and don't take time to give concrete detail anymore. If I had to guess, it's probably because there's gonna be an episode of Assembled on Disney+, Plus, which is gonna be an hour-long special about the making of the movie, so like, I get it, but also like, what would be the harm of taking that episode and just slapping it onto a disc, you know? But you know what Disney Plus still doesn't have? Audio commentaries and deleted scenes, dang it. So that's about... Two points to physical media. Your move, buttheads. But in all seriousness, I sadly am gonna have to give the bonus content a bronze unboxing machete. On a much lighter note, the movie looks fantastic in 4K. The image is very clean and I think truly shines when, again, we have those amazing practical locations. It's almost like watching a nature documentary, but with like superpowers and junk. But the VFX look nice as well, even that king deviant thing played by Alexander Skarsgård that you wouldn't know unless I told you probably. The bonus content may suffer quite a bit, but as far as picture goes, I'm definitely gonna give that a gold unboxing machete. So before we wrap things up here, I asked you guys on my community tab what your thoughts were on the movie, so let's take a look and see what you guys wrote, shall we? My good friend Anthony A. Perez writes, It was a visual spectacle with great performances, but the story was a bit lackluster. Not a bad movie, but definitely lower tier MCU. I enjoyed plenty about it. And that pretty much kind of sums up my general thoughts on the movie too. I'm more on the positive side, but you know, it's not my absolute favorite MCU movie. Then Joey's movie blog chimes in saying, While it was the best looking MCU movie, I thought it was trying to do too much in one movie and left thinking it should have been a Disney Plus show. That's another argument I've been hearing a little bit online saying it should have been a Disney Plus show or not, so definitely interesting perspective there. Then lastly, from Soren the Film Brony, such a disappointment from the director of Nomadland. The ambition is there, but not even 157 minutes is long enough to cover the entire story should have been a Disney Plus series. So that definitely appears to be the consensus where it's definitely got some good things going for it, but overall just too much in one movie. And I do kind of agree that I think a Disney Plus show would have been a good way to go. Maybe like one episode per Eternal and they all come together to fight whatever it is they were fighting at the end, I, I don't honestly remember too greatly. So who knows when we're gonna see another like Eternals-centric project in the future, but maybe they will try the Disney Plus route next time. I don't know. Overall, if you're an MCU completist and you have to have every single movie in physical form, then regardless of what I say, you're of course going to pick it up. But if you did enjoy the movie plenty and don't really care too much about the bonus content, 
then of course, I'm gonna recommend picking it up. This release could have been way better, but it, it'll look nice on my shelf. And of course, I am giving away my digital code for this movie, so if you want to potentially win this super celestial code, then comment down below which Eternal you'd like to see pop up next, whether it be in an Eternal sequel, or an Avengers movie, or... A uh, weird cameo in Doctor Strange Electric Boogaloo. Whoever it is, comment down below, and in about 24 hours or so, I'll pick the winner. Anywho. So if you want to see some more Blu-ray reviews from me, you can check out this playlist right over here. Or if you want to see what YouTube recommends you watch me next, you can check out that video right down there. And of course, subscribe if you live, talk, and buy movies. And we'll see you on the break of Side.